Do you know the chemical process engineer rules between business and design? Do you want to know how you can help the business department to close new customers without project issues? This video is for you. My name is Jefferson Costa. I'm a chemical process engineer with expertise in plant design, and I am also responsible for the in-process booster training program. In this YouTube channel, I teach you everything that you must know to work with plant design. The idea for this video came because recently I was relocated to the business department of the company and now I am responsible for dealing with the technical issues related to clients. And one of my activities right now is to review contracts to make sure that everything is okay. And based on that, I prepared this video and I will cover at least five topics with you. The first one is the interface between business and design. Let's talk about main issues about contracts with clients. What is the importance of the units of measurement? How to set a tailor-made system of units on Aspen High Seas? And finally, what you should add into better limits pipe in the piping instrumentation diagram. All of this, with all of this, I believe that you will keep improving your chemical process engineering skills to work with plant design. Let's start the first subject talking about the interface between business and design. The point of view of the chemical process engineer, we are responsible for sizing, selecting and design of equipment and process to solve some kind of problem and the business department are responsible for looking for new customers and clients, verify their demands, and share with the engineering team the problems in order that we can propose the best solution to the client. And although both departments have, are interdependent, not always they walk in the same speed. In many cases, the business department requires responses much faster than the engineering department are able to give to them. One of the examples is about the schedule. The business team must know as, as fast as possible how many, uh, how many months a solution can be implemented and how much time we'll get to be able to share with the, the client which kind of solution can be proposed. And not only that, in terms of economics, it's very important that the business team knows how much is the capex of the project, how much is the opex of the project, because based on that, the economic will be evaluated and these, those values will define how much can be asked for the solution. On the other hand, to the engineering team be able to give this kind of, of uh, answers, it's important that we understand which are the requirements, which are the basis and assumptions that can be done in the project, because if we don't know which are the requirements of the customer, we are not able to select the best solution for them. For instance, a company wants to buy nitrogen for some kind of process to that process and if we don't know how much flow, how much pressure and how much period and, how, uh, and the temperature limits, we are not able to, to size, select and design a system to achieve their goals. So in many cases, the in the business department has very few information to share with the engineering department and in the same way they want the information of the schedule and cost to share with the customer in order to give the thing a proposal. So the interface between the two departments sometimes can be very stressful if there is no good management uh, about this relationship. Of course, that 
this kind of issue happens based uh, depends on the size of the company depends on the of the culture of the company sometimes uh, it's depending on which are installed the department if it's in south america if it's in asia in europe because each region has its own way of dealing of a uh, problem but in any case it's very important that you that you understand that we must uh, work together with the business team because if you are in a design company what gives gives to you job is the business department they need to close contracts with customers in order that you have projects to develop if you, you are in a in a manufacturing company on a in industrial company you need the business team to close contracts with customers in order that you can uh, develop projects to supply more products to supply more materials and etc so remember about that every time that the business team has crazy requirements for you now let's cover the main issue about contracts with customer and remember that in many cases the person that sells the solution is not the same person that develops or designs the solution and because of that the contracts has a legal part and also a technical part and the engineering team or the chemical process engineer working with business must support them in the technical parts to make sure that everything is okay one of the issues that you can have is the definition about the battery limit because the battery limit is a point where the responsibility of the product or the responsibility for from the solution changes hands it's not my it's not more uh, responsibility of my company now it's responsibility of the customer analogy for that is about email uh, imagine that the google are responsible for transmitting email from one point to another so while i am writing the email in my computer the responsibility is mine so when i click in the send button now the responsibility to deliver that email is for, for from google for instance and when the when the email arrives at the destination the google is not more responsible for the email and now the responsibility is from the receiver and the same happens in the industrial design or in the industrial process we need to define which are the battery limit of a project and that is important because in the battery limit is where you must comply with the requirements of the customer and that can be a issue also must be very clear which are the requirements of the customer in terms of flow pressure temperature composition and etc if if for any reason you define in the contract and uh, which are the location of the battery limits and while we are developing the plan design the business changes the point of the battery limit it uh, can happen it's not unusual to have changes in the contract because uh, during the development of the project the requirement the the chances to uh, achieve the requirements can decrease for instance let's suppose that the requirements is that i must supply nitrogen at 10 bar g uh, more or less two percent of deviation so i can deliver nitrogen at the battery limit at eight bar or up to 12 bar g as a matter of energy and cost you will always try to deliver the the product at the lowest pressure as possible because you will have uh, you will expend less energy and because of that the cost of operation will be lower and the revenues of the company will be higher 
And based on that, if the battery limit changes, for instance, to, to 200 meters or 500 meters, now I have another, another pressure drop associated to that. And eventually, depending on the sizing of my pipeline, I will need to change the pipeline to have less uh, pressure drop on, on the system. But if that is not observed, eventually you will not be able to deliver the, the pressure at the minimal conditions because it was not observed the question related to the battery limit. Another example that I can give you and I observed in some of the companies that I worked on was that the customer had a requirement of receiving, if I'm not wrong, uh, hydrogen at 14 RG at the customer battery limit. And when the solution was proposed, they considered 14 at the hydrogen plant. And between the hydrogen plant and the customer battery limit, there was some hundreds of meters to be achieved. And moreover, there was a measurement station. And as you know, the measurements in station, depending on the kind of the device to, to measure it, the pre, there is a pressure drop associated with that. And that was an issue that should be solved. And if it was observed, that kind of problem could be avoided. So make sure that when you are reviewing a contract, the battery limit is defined because that will guarantee that your design will be will comply with the requirement with the requirements at the battery limit and verify which are the conditions that are asked for by the customer. That is very important. And that leads to the importance of the units of measurement or the system of units used in the contract. Make sure that you always use in your process simulation or in spreadsheets the same kind of system of units that you have in your contract. And we will see how to use the Aspen High Seas to set that. But here, what I want you to be alert is that when we are talking about uh, flow, volume flow, it's very, very important that you define which are the bases for that volume flow of gases, because gases are compressible fluids. So if you are considering that your gas is measured at 1 atm and 0 grau celsius as you have in the international system of units if you compare that to a gas that must be measured at 1 atm and 20 celsius degree the values will not match and depending on how it should be considered you can have a differences around 7% of flow and that can be a lot of money that your company is losing or that is being considered in a wrong way. So that's very important. And also when you are, for instance, in, here in Brazil, we most often use the system of units for the measurement. And, but if we, you are uh, buying or selling something to North America, they use the English system of units. So instead of using normal cubic meters per hour, they will use the standard cubic feet per minute. And not only that, the measurement of uh, flow changes and the basis changes also. In the system of unit, international system of units, most often the normal conditions is related to zero Celsius degree. In the standard units is 60 Fahrenheit. That is around 15.5 Celsius degree. So this can be a issue. Uh, imagine that you are buying or you are selling a nitrogen plant and you design the conditions 
to the to deliver the gas at 1000 cubic meters uh, at 20 Celsius degree and 1 atm as per the regulations in Brazil for instance and you are delivering that to the uh, Europe that uses the basis as Celsius degree at zero Celsius degree. So the volume, the, the guaranteed volume that you are sending to the customer is 7% lower than they expect. If you are uh, designing normal cubic meters and the reference for measurement is a temperature above the zero Celsius degree, you have a safety margin for uh, increasing the plant capacity, the, the flow of gases in the plant. But if you are at the opposite, if your design uh, is based on one temperature, for instance, in the imperial units in 60 Fahrenheit, and you are selling to a uh, location that considers a lower temperature, the measurement will not be the same, will be lower, so you are losing capacity in your plant. That is very, very important to you observe. Another, another thing that is very important about system of units is the definition of pressure in the battery limit many cases the at standard any measurement in the field is done in manometric conditions and on the other hand almost all the calculations in plane design are based on absolute conditions and as the people that are responsible for writing the contract are not are, they are not technical they are not familiar with barge Barre and etc. They only write in the contract that the gas must be delivered at 20 bar. But it's important to us understand. Uh, it's important to us in in the engineering make sure that it's absolute bar or if it is manometric bar or gauge bar because that will do a lot of differences. You can save a lot of energy or it will impact the sizing of process safety devices in your pipeline, for instance. So if you have opportunity of a comment a contract, make sure that you have the, the units of pressure in format in absolute bar, uh, absolute pressure or manometric pressure because this way there will not be any kind of inconsistencies between what are being developed and what will be delivered in real life. And now that you are familiar with the interface between business and design, the main issues about contracts with clients and the importance of units of measurement, let's see on Aspen High Seas how you can set different or tailor-made system of units in order that you don't miss anything between what are the requirements of the customer and what you must develop in terms of plan design. Here you can see uh, objects needed for saturation of the gas and what I have here is that most often when we are talking about the hydrocarbons what you receive is a chromatography of the hydrocarbon and the chromatography is based on dry bases. It means that there is no water in the hydrocarbon. And in some cases, that's not true. In fact, you have some kind of saturation in the gas. So because of to deal with that, we can use the saturated object in the Aspen High Seas. And it is what I'm doing right now, but what I want to show you is the system of units, how we can solve that, how we can create new system of units for each project that we are dealing about. So here, just to remind you, the Aspen High Seas has some standard system of units 
if you are starting your Aspen High Seas for the first time, you have huge system of units that are based on English, Fahrenheit, PCIA, uh, pounds small per hour. We have the system, international system that uses the Celsius, kilopascal, and kilogram mol. We have the euro system that uses bar, Celsius, and kilo kilogram mol and this bar here although you don't have the A it is the absolute bar and you have you find also others standard units here safety English and the safety international standard now let's suppose that my customer instead of using bar instead of using piece PCIA, they requires for KGF per centimeter, centimeter square gauge. So how I can do to, to solve that? Let's suppose that my gas is available at 1 KGF per centimeter square. I can type this uh, Choosing the units here, uh, type the number and choose the units. Let's suppose it's manometric. But every time that I do this way, the Aspen High Seas will convert to the units of measure, the basis of units used in my system of units here, safety SI. So it's bar G. I don't want bar G, I don't want Celsius. I, I want that every information that I add to the system of uh, to my conditions uh, is in Kelvin and also kilograms. So to save that, to solve that, let's go to unit set. And you what you will do, the Aspen High Seas, they do a copy of the current system of units. You can name that. But the name of your customer, for instance, let's suppose I'm dealing with Lindy and now I can change my system of units. I want pressure as KGF and I want temperature as Kelvin. When I click on OK, now the, the units has changed. And now every time that I type, information it will use the system of units that is my base now but I have another customer that uses another set of system of units and now I can do create another system of units so I will copy this one and now I will use for instance let's suppose it's buy And I can change any system of units that I have. For instance, uh, in my project is not mass that I will use. I need to deliver the product as ton. So now I can change that. The flow, some, something that is very interesting to you understand that kilomoles per hour, uh, Pounds mol per hour is not a measure that is done in real life. It's used only for by chemical process engineer. So the molar flow that you find in the industry is normal cubic meter per hour, standard cubic feet per minutes per second, etc. Mass flow, molar flow. So the kilomol per hour is a unit, a system of units for chemical engineers. Most often we will size or design our plants based on normal cubic meters per hour or standard or eventually millions standard cubic feet per hours and etc. Because these are units that can be measured in the field. You have many available system of measurement able to measure in normal cubic 
meter per hour or other volumetric uh, units of measurement and not the kilograms is not used for measuring you will not find any plants any news in the internet or in the papers talking that buyer gain another contracts for 1000 kilomoles per hour of butane for instance or another chemical because that's not measured in the field what is measured is volumetric flow mass flow and because of that when we are talking about gases many cases is normal cubic meter per hour when we are talking about international system of units you will find millions standard cubic feet per hour if we are talking about english system of units and in other countries like in brazil normal cubic meter per hour in the system of units international system of units is based on zero celsius degree and here in brazil what we have is 20 celsius degree and that leads for some of the main issues that you can have in the contract so make sure that when you are developing your process simulation you are using the system of units that matches with the contract because this way you will make sure that you will not mess with any formation and you will guarantee the requirements at the battery limit if you are with me up to this point get this opportunity to give a like to this video and also to share this video with the chemical process engineer the engineering community because this way you will help me to achieve 100,000 chemical process engineers around the world and now let's cover the last subject and i will share with you two or three examples related to what you should add into the battery limit when you are developing the piping and in the instrumentation diagram here we have a typical battery limit for natural gas line and in in the left side of the dash point line we have the supplier in this case is the supplier it's not a responsibility of the project because you can see there is any uh, information related to this line and at the right right side of the dash point line we have the responsibility of the project or responsibility in this case of the company and what you can see here is that the nomenclature or the letters for battery limits here we it's not in english is limit the battery we have the, the the information of the fluid in this case most often we don't use this designation in the line we use the line identification that is not shown here make sure that you always have uh, isolation valve as close as possible to the battery limit because you want to avoid any chances of sending uh, flammable gas or any kind of fluids to uh, to another another person without permission so this isolation valve is to prevent this kind of uh, situation to happen we have here a figure eight a figure eight is a kind of flange where in one one part you have a blind flange and in the other part you have you have a orifice so one to the correct way to read this symbol here is that the circle in white below is the part that is installed in the field so here it means that the orifice is installed as standard and the closed part the isolation part is not aligned with the line and that is the opposite here at the bottom you can see that Closer to the line is the black cycle, is a circle. It means that this figure eight is closed. And here you have the flare. 
So these lines here is for venting for flare or draining for oily system. So that's why there is a, a figure eight here to make sure that the system is isolated. And remember that although I call it a isolation valve, you only make sure that your system are isolated or in other words, is not allow the leakage of the gases or any fluids to the process. If you have a figure eight installed in the blocked conditions, or if you, you consider also a block and bleed, that can be also considered a positive isolation. So if I close this valve, I close this one and I open, the one of these drains or the the valve that you can open to atmosphere will depend on the kind of fluid that you are receiving but let's suppose that i close this one i close this one and i open the vent align it to the flare i can consider that this side of my process is isolated from the source because any leakage that happens in this valve will go to the flare system and in the, in the other hand I will not have leakage from this system to mine because in many cases the process is pressurized so the gas leak goes from the higher pressure to the lower pressure. If I have only this one valve closed and the other ones closed uh, even though this one if I have a leak in this valve, this will pressurize the this, this system and if the pressure is higher than my process, I can have leak for this system. Many cases what happens is that I will depressurize my process site to do the maintenance of the instrumentation of the equipment and uh, to do some kind of welding or hot hot service here and I don't want that any flammable fluid leaks for uh, the part of the process where I'm dealing with hot service. Examples of a hot service is welding because if you have air, you have a flammable source and you have energy, you can have a flame or an explosion. So, that's why we need to do a positive isolation. The positive isolation means that I guarantee that there is no leak between uh, one part of the process and the other part. So here we have manual valves. These small valves here, three and four inches valves are for draining. So if I need to do hydro, hydro task uh, pressure, if I need to do hydro test, testing pressure, I need to remove the water from the system so I can use these small valves. Eventually, during startup, I can remove some kind of condensate. Here, I have a check valve to prevent that my, any gas that I have downstream of the check valve will return to the source that's very important to prevent a misdirection of the fluid and he, uh, after the second isolation valve I have my system of measurement. If we are talking about gases it's very important to have a pressure transmitter or at least a local manometer to verify the pressure that we are receiving the media because as I told you, you need to comply with the requirements at the, the battery limit. So our battery limit is, is here. And as close as possible to battery limit, you have the measurement. You will verify if the conditions are on the contract are being respected. We have the temperature and we have a flow transmitter. Depending on the kind of... of flow measurement that are being considered. For instance, if you are using orifice plate, many cases we do the compensation, we use the pressure and temperature 
of the fluid in the operation conditions to compensate the information based on the standard condition like uh, zero Celsius degree and one ATM. So that is interesting to decrease the error that you can have associated with the operating conditions. Because if for the same orifice plate, if I change the pressure and I, paint, I change the temperature, although the mass of flow of fluid is the same, the volumetric uh, measurement will be different. That's why we, we usually have the flow measurement set at a specific pressure and a specific condition. Now we have another example of battery limit, but this time for high pressure steam. So we have also the dash line with dash point line. He is to represent the battery limit and responsibility from one person to another. He we have the responsibility of the supplier. Here we have the responsibility of the taker. And in this arrangement, we have a isolation valve and we have a bypass with another isolation valve, uh, figure eight. And uh, in this case, we have a globe valve or a regulating valve. Downstream of the manual valves with drain valves, small ones, we have also the pressure, temperature, and flow indication or flow me or measurement. And different from the natural gas stream that we have seen, there is no vent line uh, or vent line for flare because here we are talking about the high pressure steam. But in the other hand, we have a bypass valve because during the startup of the system or commissioning of the system, what happens is that you will not open the main isolation valve to fill your system. You will, find, you will open the bypass and you will open the globe valve slowly, slowly to pressurize the system because now we are talking about a uh, stream that is at very high temperature in a system that is at ambient temperature. So you don't want to have any kind of uh, temperature shock. So to avoid that, you will pressurize slowly. There is a heat exchanging between the vapor and between the metal and be, uh, be, between the ambient condition. And once it is pressurized and you will verify in the manometer or in the pressure transmitter that is installed in the field, once this is pressurized and the pressure is equalized, you will close the bypass drain, what has of condensate formed here, and will open the main isolation valve. Verify that during the use of the bypass, the figure eight must be rotated because as it is, the isolation part is in the system, is aligned to the system. And when the, the operation is finished, the figure eight must be rotated again to, to isolate the system. So when you will start the system, before starting, you will rotate to have the white part at the bottom part. And now it means that it's aligned. And when you finish, you will rotate to have the black part at the bottom. And it means that it is isolated. And in the, the main part, this one, you will let it open because once it is pressurized, you will not open the figure eight again, because to deal with this figure eight, you must untight the bolt to rotate it. And you cannot do that in a pressurized pipeline. Here to rotate the figure eight, you will close both manual valves and open the drain. So you will depressurize everything that you have here. To finish the examples that I have to share with you related to 
battery limits arrangement. Let's talk now about cooling water. And here we have an uh, example of cooling water supply and cooling water return. So what we have here, the same dash line point, dash point line to represent the battery limits. We have in this case, the identification of the fluid. It's not necessary if you have the identification of the pipe here and the identification of the pipe. Most often you have the nominal pipe size of the line. You have the fluid, you have the number of the units, you have the sequential number of the line, you have the material of the pipeline. In some cases, if you have insulation, you also add that to the uh, pipe numbering. And we have an uh, isolation valve here. As it is water, there is no big concern. So there is no double blocking bleeds, no uh, drain for oily system. And of course, there is no vent to flare. So there is only one isolation valve, a drain valve and a figure eight. And as, you, as I told you, the white part represents that the figure with eight is opened. And as battery limits to make sure that the supply complies with the requirements in the contract, we have the measurement of pressure, measurement of temperature, measurement of flow. And in many cases, when we are using uh, gas, when we are measuring gases, we do the compensation of the measurement, but here we are talking about uh, compressible fluid and it's not common to do the compensation of using pressure and temperature in liquid measurement. In the, in the cooling water return, we have the same arrangement or very similar arrangement with the dash point line to represent the battery limit, the identification of the fluid. Now it's returned. We have the isolation valve, drain valve, and now we have only the temperature and pressure and we don't have the flow measurement. And why we don't have the flow measurement? Because a only water system is a closed loop system so it's not expected that you lose flow during this process. What happens is that you will receive the cooling water at a required pressure and temperature. It will uh, change temperature with the system and it will increase the temperature and you will decrease the pressure because you have a pressure drop of your system. And this is important just to a matter of verification of the efficiency of the system. If the pressure, differential pressure increases too much, it means that you have some obstruction in your heat exchangers, for instance. And if your temperature decreases too much, you, have, you can have also some kind of inefficiency in the equipment and they needed to be cleaned. So that's why uh, it's interesting to have the pressure and temperature in the return size for uh, evaluation of the efficiency of the equipment. In some projects, uh, the, there are requirements for the return of the, the unit, the, the utilities. So it can be the, the case here, but not necessarily. But every time that you receive a utility or a gas stream or any stream that you receive at your plant, make sure that you have a system of measurement at as close as possible to the battery limit. So guys, this is it. What I would like to share with you in terms of chemical process engineering roles between business and design. What is very important to understand is that we must verify the technical conditions of any project and support the business team on the review of the contract and make sure that everything matches and there is any kind of misunderstanding. If you want to know more about chemical process engineering plan design, 
keep with my YouTube channel, subscribe to that, and to help me to achieve 100,000 chemical process engineers around the world, I asked you to share this video with as much groups of WhatsApp, Telegram, or any other kind of group that you have, because this way I will be able to help more people around the world. So this is it. I hope you like it and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.